Hello, here's uh, Jonas Sundqvist from uh, Dresden, Germany. So I'm here today to talk about uh, particle uh, ALD and CVD on uh, hard metals and some other powders. Um, this is work I've done uh, during my time at Fraunhofer. So since about a month now, I'm an independent consultant full time for Bold Engineering, a Swedish company. So this is joint presentation with my former colleagues at Fraunhofer IGTS in Dresden, Mario Krug, Mande Hörn, and uh, the new PhD student, Marco Radhaus. So I'll get started. So we have been developed the ALD and CVD process on uh, tungsten carbide and cubic boron nitride for a while now. So the goal with this process is to increase the hardness of the sintered product that you do out of the powder. So the powder is a wide range of hard materials like if you have here single crystalline diamond, polycrystalline diamond and then different types of hard metal based on either uh, tungsten carbide uh, cubic boron nitride. So as you notice, this whole graph is in German, but it's sort of universal language in this business. Um, and what you do there, you put in cobalt uh, as a um, promoter to before the sintering process to act as a, uh, a glue between the grains that uh, stick together. And we are trying to control this process in more detail. And there's all range of other uh, additives like uh, you can do uh, chromium based carbide, tantalum carbide, nobium carbide, titanium carbide. So it's like a secret brew that the companies develop over the years and put in there to go along this curve here. So uh, minimum uh, increase the rapture strength and the hardness. So the perfect situation would be like always to be up here in the impossible corner where everything is good, but you don't reach that. So, um, if you look at the structure, so here's on the left side, you see single crystalline material. So in this case, it's tungsten carbide. And on the right side is a polycrystalline uh, tungsten carbide, and that's what we are developing. So we want to coat the individual grains here with uh, titanium nitride uh, CVD or ALD process to create. So we, what we do is that we change the um, wetting function of the tungsten carbide surface. Uh, and this is beneficial for the cobalt um, when you do the sintering process. And that increases then, it, it has two functions. It reduces the risk of getting cobalt diffusing into the tungsten carbide, which reduces the hardness of the carbide and also improves the wetting of the surface. So here, same graph, but now to confuse you, I switched. So we have now have hardness down here and fracture toughness uh, as y-axis. And yeah, we want to go here. We want to be harder, faster, and make a tougher material because this is uh, then eventually going to be shaped into 3D form and used for cutting tools to cut steel and aluminum and other metal at operating them at high temperature. Um, and the harder material is, and it also needs to have low rupture strength. So you, the longer you can use this tool bit, and if you can use it for long, you don't have to swap it that often. And then you can run more productive and you also save, of course, money because this tool puts cost of money over time. So, so some people, they work just on the hard metal and try to improve that. And then they, you also have a coating on top of that, which we also do with the ALD. So, but that's a whole different field. Uh, so now we're optimizing the ALD CVD process for the powder. So you have to think this is a um, big business. So I don't know exactly, but it's metric tons of uh, tungsten carbide powder every year that is used for this. And it all, if 
this would go into production, it uh, would then all have to be coated by CVD or ALD. So I guess you're all hoping now for ALD, of course. Let's see. Um, here's one example is cubic boron nitride powder that we have coated. So cubic boron nitride also have other applications, like you use it for as a polishing granulate that you then mold into polishing discs and uh, such things. So we also coat it here, it's just an example, it's beautiful tinitride coating on one of those grains. And we run, you see here, sample size up to 100 grams, so this is enough to do sintering tests uh, and a lot of customer requests in this size at the moment because it's a, you know, R&D topic, it's not any pilot production or so. So 100 gram is definitely enough. Uh, so before setting this up, uh, there was all types of considerations, what type of chamber technology to use. So uh, I think you're well aware of the main types. Uh, you know, the good old fluidized bed that has been used for quite a long time for particle uh, ALD. And rotating drum, so we have decided to use a rotating drum. I will explain more in detail why and how it's integrated. And there's other technologies, like if you want to scale up and go to metric tons, then maybe you want to have rather a vibrating belt type of reactor or a spatial type of fluidized bed reactor or something like that. But the, the ro uh, rotating drum is very versatile and it can be easily be integrated in standard uh, LPCVD furnace, ALD furnace. So this is what we did. So we have normally this horizontal ALD CVD furnace, it's three zone furnace. Uh, you can stick in uh, uh, anything you like there. We have different modules, like we have roll to roll wire modules. We have this rotating drum that I will show in the next slide. And we can go up to 1050 degrees C. So that's where the inconel would get too weak if we go above that. So it's an inconel outer reactor and then it's a quartz insert, which is easy then when you swap between process different materials, you can just remove the insert and clean it and go to the next powder or tool bit coating experiment. So this furnace can run in ALD and CVD mode and has a rather big uh, cocktail bar here uh, behind with different precursors. Uh, all the typical ones and also a lot of like CVD gases that you need for hard code. So process pressure, uh, 0.1 millibar up to one bar. Uh, we can do atmospheric for carbon nanotubes. Temperature 50 to 1050. Fiber winding module, if we run that, we can run up to 200 millimeter per minute. Um, as I said earlier, powder up to 100 gram goes into the drum. And we use typically, we do a lot of Thai nitride, uh, aluminum oxide, Thai aluminum nitride and stuff like this. So we use either tickle TMA or in situ gen generated aluminum three chloride and water if you do oxides. Otherwise we have the other co-rectants like uh, ammonia, HCl, hydrogen, argon, nitrogen. And we can also in situ generate basically any metal chloride which is uh, volatile enough. So hafnium chloride, zirconium chloride, tungsten chloride can all be made in situ. So we just have metal ships and run it through a special uh, furnace and we in situ generate those uh, precursors. Um, so rotating drum. So it's mounted on a shaft. Uh, you can see here, it's a rotating shaft. So it rotates at different speeds. And on the end of this, we have a graphite drum which we can, can swap and change the design of. And this is where we place the powder. And this whole shaft then is stuck into the horizontal furnace and sealed with a uh, caldrous o-ring. So we can also hook up a, a glove box here. So we do some battery uh, powder research, cathode material and stuff, um, hygroscopic material. So we can use an inert atmosphere here and load it and unload. And there's also other applications with powder applications we do. We do um, ultraviolet lightning powder, um, some, uh, up, there's a wide range of applications so the last three years, so we get quite many customer requests on this tool. So um, first, we, to get the first results, we did stationary CVD uh, 
tests. So we just loaded up the tungsten carbide in ceramic boats. And we used our old small as a CVD furnace for these tests. And one, uh, this was what our um, process uh, expert said was the, the process for the best conformality. So we really wanted to do a test here. Do we do you need to go through the hassle of having a HLD process or can we do a CVD process? So this was what she said, Mandy Hearn that this would be the best conformality, so it's tickle-based. Instead of using ammonia, we use hydrogen and nitrogen mixture at 950 degrees C. And it's a horizontal furnace. And we run that for uh, half an hour or so, and we got the color. And it's very decent. It's quite nice conformal, so you see the light um, uh, coating here around the darker tungsten carbide grains. And so what you could see, sometimes you had sort of a shadowing effect. So you have here thinner coating on one side and then a thicker coating on the other side. So it's not uh, perfectly conformal, conformal. So yeah, for sure, we needed to try out ALD instead. We want to do it perfect. So that's where we're then loaded up in the drum. So you see this drum. This has now, you see, it has sort of a bronze color because we coated it so many times with tinitride. And the powder falls, so this is rotating. So unfortunately, this arrow is in the wrong direction. It rotates in the other direction, of course. So, so you see it creates sort of a waterfall here on one side. So the powder falls from the top down. And then we pulse uh, ALD into this. Chup, chup, chup. Tickle, purge, ammonia, purge. And originally we had open here in the back, but we have covered that with the nickel foil now uh, because we lost too much powder out this way. Um, so we now actually pulse into the chamber and then we suck out the gas. And then we pulse into the chamber, suck out the gas. It's not really optimum, so we have some filtering ideas here to optimize it further. So, but anyway, with this foil, we have sort of 75% yield, so we lose 25% uh, of the powder. It's uh, going in the general direction of the pump. So, um, if you want to, I can email you the original uh, presentation, then you can click here. There's uh, direct links and embedded movies of different rotating tests, so you can see this waterfall nicely being formed. I don't show it now because it typically fails when you click here. So um, first test, second test, and then um, we did ALD test, yeah. So here's powder, um, polycrystalline, fine-grained tungsten carbide, super hard stuff. This has been coated with uh, tinitride ALD, but 20 nanometer recipe, I think, used. Yeah, 400 cycles. 120 degrees C, that's uh, 0 0.333 uh, angstrom per cycle and some incubation cycles, that should be something like that. Um, and here, low energy, you can see a rather smooth surface, so we use low energy in the SEM. Uh, that means we are surface sensitive, we only look basically at the surface now. And we don't see this structure that we expect to see from tungsten carbide, uh, the individual single crystalline grains. But if you increase the energy a bit, then you see the coating sort of disappears. You see through the coating and you can see the structure of tungsten carbide. So it looks uh, like we have a very good uh, coverage and uh, um, we were happy with this result. We also checked edx so you can see here take different points this is just a representative point you see tungsten for sure some contamination a bit chlorine here because we have a relatively low temperature so we definitely get some chlorine left over from uh, titanium tetrachloride and two nice titanium peaks and the big one over here so we definitely have tie right here and yeah so that's we have done sintering tests um, and we are working with uh, industrial partners uh, that are testing this, uh, but they are not prepared to disclose any more detailed tests yet. So that's why 
We will do that in a future conference, but for now we will just show here that it works. And what we will do, we, this is the ongoing test and we are now discussing scale up to build a bigger powder machine and go to next level, you know, to be supply, able to supply up to 10 kilo powder is the next plan. And we have also uh, a other program, it's for better materials. So in this case, we do it's nothing fancy. It's what everybody's doing. Um, aluminum oxide, very thin conformal layer on the cathode powder material. We don't work anymore with uh, cobalt based. So we have moved the whole Fraunhofer IKTS program on this and batteries has moved ahead and uh, for sure do some cobalt NMC material, but the um, main focus is cobalt free, you know. You know the story about cobalt, it's uh, mined in the Democratic Republic of Congo, and the conditions are really crap there, and this is definitely nothing that you want to be a part of, um, if you can step out of that, and the whole cobalt material supply chain is also a bit suspect. Uh, so we have decided to switch technologies all cobalt free, so it's a future material, um, it's not really on the market yet. Everybody's still using cobalt. And instead it's a uh, nickel manganese uh, 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 lithium mixture. And first test, Ta-da! we did 20 cycles versus 200 cycles. So we knew 200 cycles would be definitely, uh, we would kill the cells basically, but we so surprised we could measure something. And um, it's, it's in the details, it's more like engineering, it's uh, not huge improvement, but we think if you look at the slopes and so of the curves, uh, the, especially the endpoint capacity, you can clearly see if you have a thick coating, the, the capacity drops of course, but if you keep in the thin range, so we think we actually have to go even thinner, we will be able to have extend the cyclability and not get a big capacitance uh, the, um, penalty. So this is also ongoing work and we have a, a bigger long-term project starting this with some industrial consortium in Germany. So I think that's all I will say with that. And this is our process catalog, what we can do on this equipment. So anything you see here on this table uh, can be realized or has already been realized on this machine. So it's a mix of CVD and ALD processing. So thank you very much and uh, it was really great to be part of this and uh, I hope my presentation came out in time. I see that yeah, 18 minutes, some time for questions. Take care, stay safe.